Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to VJ and Co. Hey, Ben, how you doing? I'm doing good. How about yourself, Savvy? Good. Uh, this is Odyssey, the next generation science game. Holy shit, Again. you remembered the name. <laughs> I know. I'm like, am I going to get this? So, um, yeah, well, I mean, we, we got some feedback, some good feedback. We like that. We're yeah. back. Um, Ben's finally turned the graphics up to full. Yeah, Instead of no, Play -Doh. no popping in bullshit. <laughs> yeah, so it looks much better. Yeah. Much better. Um, yeah. We do and, have a uh, bit of a plan for this episode, guys, in that uh, we're going to try... For those of you that don't want to listen to us ramble on and read the journals, because you can read them faster than us, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, we'll throw uh, timestamps down in the description below that will allow you to jump the first, second, third journals, whatever we run into in this game. If yeah, you don't want to listen through it. Whatever we read... There'll be a timestamp sort of thing. So, but for those just, of you that want to see it all, it'll be there. I mean, and you might as well want to because I mean, there's some great. I mean, it's story. Yeah. So, uh, oh, Ben found another piece of a puzzle. Yeah. So last episode, guys, we were at that globe that we started at, and uh, we're trying to get it open. There's supposedly a hidden compartment inside of it that we're going to try to get inside of and uh with that we need to actually um get four puzzle pieces so that's what we're doing there trying to find this we've got two already so well we just found the third and we're going we just there. Need one more and it's the anti-node right oh look the pu yep. oh i thought that was the puzzle piece oh look a puzzle piece no it's not that's not the puzzle piece so so i mean this is interesting because it's kind of a puzzle game but it's and it's more based on science, I think, if anything. Yeah, it's an educational puzzle game, which is kind of cool. Yeah. It's neat to see that, you know. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so what do you think? Do oh, we explore no. up first, or do we go back? I think we go back, okay. personally. Go, 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 go. I keep forgetting I can run in this. I apologize. <laughs> just, trying to, try, just trying to milk out the view 10. The freaking sound of the box is breaking. It's just like, <laughs> it's like, okay, sound guys, you needed to do a little more research on boxes breaking. Yeah, go smash yeah. a few yourself. Yeah, yeah. Oh well. Okay, this one goes there. I don't know. I don't think I can handle this puzzle, guys. I mean, Ooh. oh, it's a sunset. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay, so I mean, we got the power from the solar. So that out. opens the box, which Beep. allows us to put in the anti node. I think it was the anti pod. Unlocks yeah, that's the close. Okay, so now I mean our an oh now it's saving, so we're gonna be exact opposite side and one below the equator. Oh, it's on the freaking thing. Yeah, that's easy. Okay. Uh, doink. Yeah, and there's some funky save issues with this. It didn't quite save all of our progress, but... Yeah. We had to play the game without you. It was sad. Yeah. Oh, boy. Okay, and a key. so the journal is updated. Let's start with that, and then we got the key. So, um... Ah, what the hell is going on? Okay, so this is the antipod stuff. Yeah, I think you got to go back a page, though. Do it. How do I? Can I not fucking go back a page? Oh, there we go. I'm just making sure this isn't the. Okay, yeah, there's the antipod one. Okay. Yeah. Have at her, Savvy. Sorry. It's a little delayed for me. So, uh, unpacking the boat and setting up camp all day. I had lots of time to think about antipods. I finally understand that the ancients thought down was a fixed direction in the universe and had nothing to do where the earth was. For us, that direction happens to be towards the ground, but anyone on the other side of the world, that direction would be away from the ground and they'd fall off. But if down instead meant towards the center of the earth, then the antipods wouldn't fall off. No matter where you were on the surface of a spherical earth, the down direction for you would be towards the ground beneath your feet, because that's the direction of the center of the earth. I asked Dad what he thought about redefining down like this. He said that there was an ancient Greek philosopher named Dad mm -hmm, who had... Done a similar thing. 
Interestingly, Aximander believed the Earth was flat, but based on the trajectories of the stars, he had come up with the conclusion that there was an empty space all around the flat Earth, so the Earth was freely floating in space at the center of the universe. It had no tendency to fall down, because down meant towards the center of the universe, and the Earth was already at the center of the universe. It had no reason to move in any preferred direction from there. Any choice of direction to move along outwards from the center would be arbitrary. I told Dad that someone could have said the same thing for a spherical Earth. It's already at the center of the universe, so it can't fall down anymore. And antipods on the surface wouldn't fall off either, since they would fall down towards the center of the universe. Dad agreed, and he said tomorrow was a good time to introduce me to Aristotle, one of the greatest Greek philosophers. I woke up a while ago and couldn't get back to sleep. Too much going on in my head. I went outside and found Dad on the porch looking through binoculars. It wasn't pitch black, not with the stars and quarter moon just above the horizon, but it was still too dark to see much. Uh, when he noticed me, he said he thought he saw a light out to see. He said it was nothing, but seemed worried. Since I was awake, Dad said he'd tell me about Aristotle's physics, which people throughout Europe believed for almost 2,000 years, and now it was similar to my thinking today. Aristotle believed that everything in the world around us was made of a combination of four elements, earth, water, air, and fire, kind of like solid, liquid, gases, and heat respectively the natural tendency of the element earth was to fall towards the center of the universe water also falls but not as fast as earth which is why water like an ocean lies on top of earth even though they're both heavy air is a light element and wants to rise which is why if you release air underneath water it bubbles up so air forms a blanket around earth and water Fire is the largest, largest and rises fastest, like how flames go up even if you hold a candle upside down. Aristotle said all natural motion was either towards the center of the universe down or away from the center of the universe up. This tendency of Earth causes its particles to arrange themselves symmet symmetrically around the center of the universe, the ball the ball that results in our planet Earth. And since the Earth is already at the center of the universe, it has no reason to move anymore. And so it's stationary at the center. And this feels like grade school. Yeah. All right, Jimmy, you read a page. <laughs> I pointed out a glaring problem. The sun, moon, and stars don't move towards or away from the center of the universe. They move in circles around and around from our point of view. Dad said Aristotle believed heavenly bodies were made up of a fifth element called ether. Anything made of ether is divine and moves in perfect circles, never stopping or changing its behavior. Aristotle said the universe had an inner terrestrial realm made of the four elements and the outer celestial realm made up of ether. Phew, I'll have to think about this some more, but I'm sleepy. The middle of the night isn't the best time to exercise my brain. The wretched islands are complicated. It's mostly two islands, major and minor, but each is actually a cluster of little islands bits close together with treacherous cliffs and water between them. We're on Wretched Minor and Dad believes the Caribs built rope bridges to get around safely, but he's not sure we'll, he'll find evidence to prove it after more than three centuries. The Army Corps of Engineers built their own bridges here for World War II. Uh, do, 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 they're still here, but Mom says it'll take us days to repair them. They are half concrete, half wooden, or the wooden half can pivot with a hand crank to retract like closing a drawbridge in case enemies attacked and also to connect with difficult different places and overhead are what look like zip lines for fast travel or maybe a way to retreat fast in an emergency she started the sent that sentence with the word and jesus oh, poor grammar uh, Dad said the army built outposts on Wretched Major too, but it took a year with modern ships and equipment. There's no way primitive boats or even ones like ours could land there because of the cliffs and the fast currents and dangerous rocks around the coastline. But army records show they found larger ruins there, which Guillaume hey! eh, eh, saw for himself where he shipwrecked on Wretched Major. How anyone centuries ago could get there from here to build anything is a big mystery dad wants to solve. The mystery on my mind is Aristotle's physics. It seems to explain how things fall or rise and also explains how the earth could be round. Yet it says the earth is sitting still at the center of the whole universe. 
I wish I could find some other direct evidence that proves the earth is round without also leading me to such bizarre conclusions. What could it be? Good. Okay. That's it. That's it. So. Hi, welcome back for those of you who skipped it. Yeah. If you didn't, congratulations. We appreciate it. We do. We do. Good to know uh, that we're not the only ones that like listening to ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, I guess we go up. Yeah. I mean, we know we know this is here looks like one of the bridges. That's one of the bridges about. and the zip lines. But I, I feel like, like the hand crank is from the other side, so we're going to need to zip line over. Yeah, I would assume so. I like how when we got to the island, it's like, hey, hurry, get up here, help us. It's like, wait a minute, give me 40 minutes to read your freaking little diaries. <laughs> diaries and your terrible grammar. <laughs> Jump! <laughs> I mean, and I feel like the important stuff in the last one was the... Uh, well, the stuff talking about ether and everything, and the uh, well, the four elements. So yeah, oh, going, up, like the going up the ladder. I mean, I don't necessarily love the close detail. I like it from further away more. Sorry. As yeah, well. I mean, it just it's you know the rocks aren't super amazing, but yeah, like you said, further detail by all means it looks pretty decent. Generator, interesting. Well, I mean, there's the key. I mean, you might as well turn it on. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you there. Sorry, it's a little delayed for me, so. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Ooh, it's saving, thank God. Yay. Okay. So that's on. So now we need to earth, wind, and fire. Okay. Earth, wind, uh, uh water. Yeah, and then water. Fire, then Celestial. Oh! My god, it's almost like we read the fucking... Fucking book. Holy sound effects! Oh my god, and we got an achievement. Holy Nailed shit. It. Nailed it. Nailed it. Okay, whoop, nothing fancy whoop, here. Whoop. Let's go inside. Step inside. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, journal's updated. I mean, I think we have to look at that first before we climb this. Yeah. Thing. Screw you, ladder. Okay, that was weird. Except we went up the ladder, Ben. Okay! <laughs> On top of the tall peak of Richard Miner is where the army built its observation post. Dad says it's a shame. He believes the carriage built their own observatory here, but all evidence of it was destroyed. He knows because the army photographed and starred what, stored what they found here, and Dad got to see their rock, records. They didn't do a good job but archeo by archaeology standards, but he said it was amazing that they recorded any of it at all for being soldiers in the middle of a war. Dad thinks a lot of evidence was already destroyed by pirates in the 17th century, though. They set up a base and used this peak as their own lookout. That was good luck, because the pirates also wrote about their time here, and much of it survived in locked boxes and glasses, glass bottles the army found. Dad said it's hard to learn about the Caribs directly, because they didn't leave much behind that they endured, that can endure for centuries. Even though the pirates destroyed so much, their logbooks preserved more information about the Caribs for Dad than if they had never come. The door to the army observatory can only be locked from the inside, so the door was left unlocked when the army abandoned the islands after the war. Inside the structure is three floors, connected with ladders going up through trap doors. Mm -hmm. Almost everything has been stripped out except for some tables and chairs. The top floor has two different exits leading outside. One of them is through a lookout room leading to another rotating bridge, which seems to connect to the other exit. And that seems strange. It might be it might be just to give soldiers access to the two zip lines connecting the other two pieces of wretched miner. Sid says he wants to fix the zip lines, but mom says later the bridges have to come first. The best part is we get to sleep up here tonight. Well, uh, I told dad I couldn't think of a direct way to prove the earth was round. He said a dinner plate is round but flat. You mean round like a ball and so a sphere? He hadn't talked about this difference before. Then he pointed to the quarter moon and said it looked round, but was it a disc or a sphere? I said it looked like a sphere, but I couldn't prove it. He said it 
was reasonable and the ancient people worked it out with ob uh, observations over longer periods than just looking at the sky one night watching the moon go through phases from a waxing growing crescent up to a full moon and then back to a, the waning shrinking crescent the ancient greek philosopher paramedes noticed a pattern the bright part of the moon was always in the direction of the sun you can see the best during the day when the moon is a crescent and the lit side is, side is always on the side of the nearby sun what caused this pattern the exclamation paramedes came up with is that the moon didn't cast its own light it just reflected sunlight that's why the bright side is always facing the sun i said that even more evidence the sun is traveling in empty space on the other side of the earth at night if the sun were hidden inside a boat or a dragon it's like couldn't shine on the moon dad agreed he also added that one could easily prove the moon had to be a sphere he pointed up to the quarter moon above and said that there was no way you could shine a light on a flat disc and have it look like that that was hard to wrap my head around even if you shone the light at the right angle was there no way to light up a crescent part of a disc seriously that's it eh oh haha <laughs> Dad said the best way to prove it was to try it, so if I have some time tomorrow, I'll construct a physical model and see. I twisted my ankle, helping fix the lower bridge. Guillaume carried me up to the bunker, and Sid got some ice from the boat. Mom says it's pretty bad, and I need to take it easy, probably for days now. Now I'm stuck here with an ice pack. Mom, Sid, and Guillaume are back fixing the bridge and dad's working here in the bunker, careful, carefully photographing and documenting, documenting everything, looking for anything else left behind that might tell him something about the Caribs or the pirates. It doesn't seem like there's much around though. I think he just doesn't want me to be alone up here. I got out my project supplies and made models to test what dad and I talked about last night. I made two moons, a flat disc from an old round piece of plywood, and a sphere out of a styrofoam ball. My project supplies are half stuff from uh, half stuff you get from a craft store and half salvage from a junkyard near my house, including a bunch of these cool crank wheels that make gears and sliders to go back and forth. I mounted a light on a track and to act like the sun between the two moons so I could crank it forward and backwards. I could have just held the models up to the light, but I wanted to be precise. The spherical moon shows all the different phases the real moon does, but the disc moon is only ever completely dark or completely lit. There with no moon, new phase, no phases in between. This proves it. The real moon has to be a sphere. Not only that, but I realized the only way to get crescent or quarter moons like we're having at night now is for the sun to be further away than the moon. It's still at least an hour till dinner time. I don't think anyone will come back till then. In the meantime, I think I'll paint these models to look like the real moon. Maybe I can bring it to school next year for extra credit. I showed everyone my model, especially the setting where the sun's light barely hits the flat moon but still lights it all uniformly, proving that phases are only possible if the moon is a sphere. I hate to say it, but there was a spelling mistake. I know, it was horrible. It made me cringe a little bit. You saw me stumble over it. <laughs> yeah, the is only. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I didn't see how this helped prove the Earth was sphere, too. I asked Dad, but instead of answering, he told us how the pirates conquered the Caribs on Wretched Island. And the pirates, even with guns, couldn't invade because the rope bridges made them vulnerable. But they had something better than guns. They had knowledge. According to the astronomical navigation charts, a lunar eclipse was due November 6th, 1672. The pirates told the Caribs that if they weren't welcome, the moon god would get angry and raise dark and red. Christopher Columbus tricked a different tribe in the Caribbean this way long before they hoped, long before, and they hoped it would work too for them. The Caribs didn't believe the pirates, but when the day came, the moon rose dark and red. All the Caribs panicked except for one. The Caribs astrologer, yeah said it had nothing to do with the pirates the moon was just the earth's shadow and would soon emerge the carib astronomer explained how moon phases show the moon show the moon doesn't make light uh it just reflects sunlight and how the moon must be a sphere to have phases and a crescent moon is only possible if the sun is further away full moon is if sun is closer only possible if sun is further away 
And with the sun, the moon and sun on similar paths, the moon can sometimes block the sun. Why else would solar eclipses happen only during a new moon? And when the sun is on the other side and the earth can get between the sun and the moon and its shadow would fall on the moon, why else would lunar eclipses only happen during a full moon? The Carib astrologer said that's what was happening and it would be over soon if they waited. But the Caribs were too afraid and didn't believe their own astrologer. As the night continued and the moon stayed dark red, they gave in. Months later, the wretched islands were a thriving pirate base with no free Carib people living there anymore. Get wrecked. Ooh. So that is that. Oh, frick, every time I press the wrong one. So, I mean, I feel like we're going to have some moon stuff coming up here. Mm -hmm. Full moons. Well, there's a... There's a... Oh. I was going to say there was a wire. Maybe that's the thing. Yeah. But, no, we're up. So we've got the... I mean, we got to do light stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a... There's an open thing there. Fuck, she's inventive for a little 13-year-old. I was going to say, this is pretty good. Does that turn? Oh, there we go. Okay, where do we have to be, Savvy? Um, I don't know. I think there, if you read it right. Yeah! Sure. <laughs> yeah, it was when, when the flat was set up. Oh. Block this constellation with the sun upstairs. Block this constellation. It looks like two people. All right. Okay, you can handle that. <laughs> sure. Uh, do, we, do we look upstairs first? Do I don't look? think so. I think, think we freaking. Leave it here? I may think we leave it here. Oh. Right. Tease him a little bit, you know? Oh, there's a box. I want to press the button. Press All the button. right, press the button. Oh, fuck, another journal. Yeah, I think we leave it here. <laughs> yeah, I think we leave it here. Oh, uh, but the ladder came down. Okay, that makes sense. So. All right. Uh, yeah, so that was uh, this Odyssey, the next generation science game. There's a bit of reading in here, so I mean, you know, it is what it is. If you skip it, that's going to be a shorter video. That's what happens when you skip parts of videos. Um, <laughs> but if you enjoy this, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and share. It really helps the channel out. Check out our social medias as well as our website. And uh, every little thing you can do helps us out. So thanks for watching. And we'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye. But that was the puzzle piece. Now look, a puzzle piece. No, it's not. That's not the puzzle piece. So, so I mean, this is interesting because it's kind of a puzzle game, but it's, I mean, it's more based on science, I think, if anything. Yeah, it's an educational puzzle game, which is kind of cool. Yeah. It's neat to see that, you know. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so what do you think? Do oh, we explore no. up first or do we go back? I think we go back, okay. personally. Go, 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 go. I keep forgetting I can run in this. I apologize. <laughs> just, the trying frickin, to try, just trying to milk out the view 10. The freaking sound of the boxes breaking is just like, <laughs> just like, okay, sound guys. You needed to do a little more research on boxes breaking. Yeah, go smash yeah. a few yourself. Third journals, whatever we run into in this game. Yeah, you don't want to listen through it. Whatever we read there'll be a timestamp sort of thing so but for those just, of you that want to see it all it'll be there i mean and you might as well want to because i mean there's some great i mean it's story yeah so, uh oh ben found another piece of a puzzle yeah. so last episode guys we were at that globe that we started at and uh, we're trying to get it open there's supposedly a hidden compartment inside of it that we're going to try to get inside of and uh with that we need to actually um get four puzzle pieces so that's what we're doing there trying to find this we've got two already so well we just found the third and we're going we just there. Need one more and it's the anti-node right oh look the yep. oh I thought hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to bj and co hey ben how you doing i'm doing good about yourself Abby. good uh this is odyssey the next generation science game Holy shit, Again. you remembered the name. <laughs> I know. I, I'm like, am I going to get this? So, um, yeah. Well, I mean, we we got some feedback, some good feedback. We like that. We're yeah. back. Um, Ben's finally turned the graphics up to full. Yeah. Instead of no, Play-Doh. No popping in bullshit. <laughs> yeah. So it looks much better. Yeah. Much better. Um, yeah. We do and, have a uh, bit of a plan for this episode, guys, in that uh, we're going to try... For those of you that don't want to listen to us ramble on and read the journals, because you can read them faster than us, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, we'll throw uh, timestamps down in the description below that will allow you to jump the first second. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Okay. 
this one goes there. I don't know. I don't think I can handle this puzzle, guys. I mean... Ooh. Oh, it's a sunset. Yeah, oh my god. Okay, so I mean, we got the power from the solar panel. So that opens the box, which Beep. allows us to put in the anti-node, I think it was. The anti-pod. Yeah, the it's close. Okay. So now, I mean, our... Oh, now it's saving. So we're going to be exact opposite side and one below the equator. Oh, it's on the freaking thing. Yeah, that's easy. Okay. Uh, doink. Oh. Yeah, and there's uh, some funky save issues with this. It didn't quite save all of our progress, but... Yeah. yeah. We had to play the game without you. It was sad. Yeah. Oh, boy. Okay, and a key. so the journal is updated. Let's start with that, and then we got the key. So, um... Ah, what the hell is going on? Okay, so this is the antipod stuff. Yeah, I think you got a little back page, though. Do it. How do I... Can I not fucking go back a page? Oh, there we go. I'm just making sure this isn't the... Okay, yeah, there's the antipod one. Okay. Yeah. Have at her, Savvy. Sorry. It's a little delayed for me. So, uh, unpacking the boat and setting up camp all day. I had lots of time to think about antipods. I finally understand.